A long time ago, there was a widow who had a daughter called Mina and a stepdaughter called Anna. As a mother, she loved Mina more because she was her own daughter. She loved Anna less because she was her stepdaughter. Mina was a very lazy girl, and her mother spoilt her by letting her have everything she wanted. Anna was never spoilt. And was made to do all the housework, as well as the important job of spinning flax into thread. Anna enjoyed her work and was always happy doing things for other people. But Mina never ever wanted to help anybody. So Anna grew into a hardworking and helpful young lady, while Mina grew lazy and bad-tempered. One evening, Anna was sitting spinning by the well when Rooster the Cockerel strutted up to her. "It's getting late," he said, "and you should go home." "Thank you, Rooster, but I must finish this spinning first," she told him, and she began to spin as fast as she could. The spindle spun faster and faster until the fine flaxen thread cut through her fingers and made them bleed. Ouch! She cried, and she let go of the spindle. It fell with little drops of her blood down, down, down into the deep, dark well. Oh no! She cried. What am I going to do? She went sadly home, and when she told her stepmother about the accident, her stepmother was very angry. Go back to the well now! She shouted. And don't come home until you've found that spindle. My stepmother gives me all the work to do. I have to spin all this flax before I go to bed. The garden needs watering. Can you help me to water the flowers and vegetables? Thank you. Now they will grow big and strong. Cock-a-doodle-doo! Have you any corn for my supper, Anna? Where is the bag of corn? Can you see it? Birds love corn and seeds. They also eat breadcrumbs and small berries. Thank you, Anna. You're always kind to everyone. Spinning makes my hands sore. Ouch! It is lost forever. I shall have to go home without it. You careless girl! Go back to the well now, and don't come back until you found that spindle. What should I do not? Should I jump into the well? Anna ran back to the well in tears and leaned over to see if the spindle was caught on a ledge. It was very dark and gloomy down there. Suddenly, her foot slipped and she lost her balance. Down, down, down she toppled into the deep, dark well. She went head over heels with a cry. Down, down, down she fell, and as she tumbled, she seemed to fall into a deep sleep. What a strange feeling it was! When she awoke, she found herself in a magical garden. She decided to follow the long silvery path in front of her and see where it led to. As she wandered amongst the beautiful flowers and trees, a delicious smell of newly baked bread wafted through the air, and she could hear someone crying. Please help me," said the voice. "My bread is baked, and it will burn if it is left any longer." Anna turned to see some loaves of bread baking in a brick oven. She did not want to see them burn. So she took them out carefully and left them to cool. Thank you," replied the oven. 
You are a warm and tender-hearted girl. I am happy to have helped you, replied Anna. Please, can you tell me which way to go from here? Just follow the path, answered the oven. Anna continued down the path towards an old apple tree. As she came nearer, she heard sobbing and realized the tree was crying. Oh, please help me, dear! My apples are ripe and ready for picking. Please shake me so they fall to the ground. Of course," said Anna, and she took hold of a branch and shook the tree as hard as she could. All the apples fell to the ground, and she picked them up gently and put them neatly in a pile. Thank you," said the tree. "You are a kind, sweet girl. I am pleased to have been helpful," she replied politely. "I wonder which way now," she said to herself. "Just follow the path," said the apple tree with a smile. My apples are ripe and ready to eat. Why are you so sad? Please shake me so my apples fall. Can you help? Tap the tree so the apples fall off. Well done. I'm looking for my lost spindle. A kind old woman lives at the end of the garden. She will help you. Anna skipped happily down the path until she came to a pretty little cottage that seemed to twinkle in the evening light, as if it was held together with stars. I wonder who lives here," she thought as she took hold of the silver doorbell. She rang it lightly, and the door opened silently. Standing in front of her was a small, rosy-faced woman with very large teeth. Anna was a little afraid of her, but the woman smiled kindly. My name is Mother Snow," she said. "Come in and have some supper with me. You must be tired and hungry." It was true, and Anna was thankful for the warm baked bread and the sweet ripe apple that the kind woman gave her. You are welcome to stay with me if you wish, but if you do, you must help me around the house. I shall be very happy to help," Anna replied politely. The following day, Anna helped with all the work that needed to be done. It is important that you shake my feather bed well," said Mother Snow. Anna shook it so well that the white, fluffy feathers flew high into the sky. Well done. Now, look in here. Said Mother Snow, pointing towards a beautiful crystal ball. Anna looked into the ball and was amazed. She could see feathery snowflakes falling from the sky onto the house and garden where she used to live. Anna was the happiest she had ever been living with Mother Snow. But after a while, she began to feel homesick. She was also worried that her stepmother and sister may have forgotten to feed Rooster. So she asked Mother Snow if she might go home. Of course you may," replied Mother Snow. "I shall come with you as far as the gate." Mother Snow took Anna by the hand and led her to the gate at the end of the garden. "Will you come back and see me one day?" asked Mother Snow. Of course I will. Thank you for letting me stay with you," replied Anna. Mother Snow gave Anna back her lost spindle, and Anna gave Mother Snow a big hug. Then, as she walked through the gate, she heard, "Because you are hardworking and true, wealth and happiness I shall give to you." At that moment, a shower of pure gold coins poured down on her. And stuck fast to her dress. Mother Snow has asked me to shake her feather bed. Will you help me? Well done. The feathers are flying in the air. Well 
done. The feathers are flying in the air. Feathers look like snowflakes. That is a job well done. The feathers are flying high into the sky. Thank you for your kindness, Mother Snow. But I feel a little homesick. Please may I go home? I understand. Here is your spindle, and I'll come with you as far as the gate at the end of the garden. Oh, thank you. You found it and kept it safe for me. What can you see in my treasure chest? Thank you, Mother Snow. Anna was amazed and turned to thank Mother Snow. But she had vanished. All she could see were a few fluttering snowflakes. Or were they perhaps white, fluffy feathers? She turned around to find she was back beside the well near her home. It was winter and snow had fallen. Cock a doodle doo! Your golden girls come home to you! crowed Rooster. Anna ran home happily and told her stepmother and sister all about her adventure. Her stepmother was very pleased when she saw how rich Anna had become. I want to be rich too! screamed Mina. Then you must do as Anna has done, said her mother. Go on now! And she gave her the spindle and sent her to sit and spin by the well. Mina sat by the well but only pretended to spin. Her fingers didn't bleed, so she pricked them with a thorn. Then, after letting drops of her blood and the spindle fall, she threw herself willingly down the deep, dark well. She wasn't afraid, because Anna had told her what would happen. It's really cold here. Why did I go outside into the cold? Can you remind me, kids? cock a doodle -doo! Have you any corn for my supper, Mina? Of course not. I don't have time to feed you. Get your own food. Help me with the housework, Mina. No, I might dirty my hands. If you want gold, Mina, you'll have to go and visit Mother Snow. I want to be rich too, so I'd better jump into the well. Water freezes in the cold winter. Maybe the well is frozen. I'll throw the spindle down first. When she awoke, she found herself in the magical garden and she began to follow the silvery path that led to Mother Snow's cottage. I shall soon have my gold, she said to herself. As she rushed along the path, she could hear someone crying for help. Please help me. My bread is baked and it will burn if it is left any longer. I haven't the time and I can't be bothered to help you, Mina replied, and she rushed on, leaving the bread to burn. The oven called out after her. You are a lazy, hard-hearted girl. Mina raced on down the path to where the apple tree stood sobbing. Oh, please help me, dear. My apples are ripe and ready for picking. Please, shake me so they fall to the ground. But Mina ignored the tree, turned up her nose and rushed on towards the cottage. I'm in a hurry and I really don't care about your apples. She snorted. The tree sighed, saying, You are a bitter and unkind girl. When at last she reached the cottage, she grabbed the doorbell and rang it loudly. As before, Mother Snow opened the door. I've come to stay with you. Have you bread and an apple ready for my supper? demanded Mina. I'm afraid not. I have no bread and no apples today, but you may come and stay with me if you wish. But if you do, you must help me around the house. My name is Mother Snow, 
I know all that. I'll help if I have to, Mina replied rudely. The following day, Mina made an effort and helped with some of the jobs around the house. Mother Snow told her that it was important to shake her feather bed well. Why? Mina asked. To make it snow, replied Mother Snow. But Mina was too lazy to shake the bed well, and hardly a snowflake fell. Oh, that old woman gives me so much work to do. Help me shake the bed. I'm too tired. I'm not doing any more. Come along, Mina. It's time for you to go home. That's good. I shall soon be rich like my sister. This is your reward. On the second day. Mina hardly helped with any jobs. She never shook the feather bed either. And on the third morning, she didn't even bother to get up. Come along, Mina. Get out of bed. It is time for you to go home. I shall take you as far as the gate," said Mother Snow. "Oh, good. This is when I get my gold," thought Mina. Mother Snow led her to the gate at the end of the garden. Can I have my reward now? Asked Mina. Oh yes, you'll get your reward," said Mother Snow. Mina turned away and did not stop to say thank you or goodbye. Then, as she walked through the gate, she heard, "Because you are lazy, rude, and untrue, a shower of mud I shall give to you." At that very moment, a shower. Of sticky mud and rubbish poured down all over her, and stuck fast. So Mina went home cold, ashamed, and dirty. Cockadoodle-doo! Your muddy girls come home to you," crowed Rooster. Her mother was not pleased with her, and made her wash all her dirty clothes. Mina was never quite so lazy, unkind, or rude ever again. Of course, Anna shared her riches with her stepmother and her sister, and her stepmother learned to love both her daughters equally. Rooster had a fine new hen house and plenty of corn to eat, and they all lived happily ever after. By the way. Remember that whenever you see snow falling, you will know that Anna is visiting Mother Snow. If you look very carefully, you might even spot a white feather or two. 